Hi everyone and welcome back to Coding with Flutter. In the last video we have seen how to create slivers with custom scroll view, sliver up bar and sliver persistent header. And in this video we continue our overview by looking at some other very common sliver widgets. So let's get back to our demo. And now it's time to look at sliver list and sliver grid. And as you might know, you can use a list view or a grid view to define a scrollable list or grid of items. However, if you want a list and a grid to scroll together, then you need to use sliver list and sliver grid, and you need to place them inside the same custom scroll view. By the way, both sliver list and sliver grid work by defining a delegate, which can be of two types. You can use a sliver child list delegate to define an explicit list of widgets like we have done over here, or you can use a sliver child builder delegate to build the items on demand as you scroll. And this is better for performance when you have a large number of items. And you might already be familiar with this distinction because sliver child list delegate is the sliver equivalent to list view and sliver child builder delegate is the sliver equivalent to list view dot builder. So in this case, I can just list the widgets that I want to use as children and in this case, I use the index inside the delegate to return a container with a given color and text. And in addition to that, I can also specify a child count to decide how many items I want in my list, or I can omit this parameter, which will result in an infinite list of items. And by the way, when we create our sliver list, we are free to specify the height of each item as we have done here, or if we want, we can put a more complex widget inside here and let Flutter take care of sizing it vertically. However, if we know that all the items inside our list should have a fixed height, then we can use a sliver fixed extent list, which takes an item extent property and setting this will force all the items to be of the same height. So this is how sliver list works. And sliver grid is very similar because it also requires a delegate that we can use to build our items. But in addition to that, it has a grid delegate, which is a different argument that we can use to specify how the items are laid out. And we can use this by creating a sliver grid delegate with max cross axis extent. And with this, we can decide the max cross axis extent for each item. And alternatively, we can use a sliver grid delegate with fixed cross axis count. And in this case, we can choose the maximum number of items in the cross axis. And either way, we can choose the spacing between items in the main and cross axis, as well as the child aspect ratio. So if I update this value and a hot reload, I can see how the layout changes. And by the way, you can also use sliver grid dot count and sliver grid dot extent as a way to declare the actual items directly rather than on demand with the builder pattern. And these constructors take arguments that are similar to the builder variants. And I think it's useful to see all the different variants in one place so that you can choose the correct one depending on your use case. Okay, so we have seen how to show a collection of widgets inside the sliver, but sometimes we just want to add a single widget to our scrollable area. And to do this, we can use another widget called a sliver to box adapter. And this is particularly useful when we want to add headers or footers to lists or grids. For example, here I have added a sliver to box adapter to define a grid header, and I can see that it shows over here. Okay, so now that we know about the most common sliver widgets, let's look at a more complex layout where we have a profile header followed by a list of activities. And as usual, the scrollable area is defined by a custom scroll view. And in this example, the profile header is a custom widget that is nested inside a sliver to box adapter. And this is followed by a sliver list, which creates a number of custom activity card widgets from a collection of model objects. And each activity card is a complex widget, which also contains a header for the current activity, as well as a list of splits. And one thing that we can notice here is that we don't need to specify the height of each item in the list because this is calculated by the Flutter layout engine for each activity card. And just as a reminder, we said that we should always use sliver widgets as the slivers of our custom scroll view. For this reason, here I'm nesting a profile header inside a sliver to box adapter 
and I'm also nesting all the activity cards inside a sliver list. And if we were to use a profile header directly in here, then we would get a layout error which looks like this. So make sure that you always wrap your widgets inside slivers when you use a custom scroll view. Next, I want to talk about sliver fill remaining. And this is a useful widget that we can use to fill the remaining space on screen. So when is it a good idea to use sliver fill remaining? Well, one use case is when we have some scrollable page that is supposed to show some content, but we need to use a placeholder when no content is available. And if we simulate a real world scenario, we might have a future builder or a stream builder that we use to load some data from the network. And in this case, we need to deal with multiple UI states. So when the data is still loading, we can show a circular progress indicator. And if there is an error, we can inform the user and give an option to retry. And when the data is loaded, we want to show the contents. And we can also handle the empty data state by showing a no content text. And in some cases, sliver fill remaining is the correct widget to use because we have a lot of empty space and we want to show something in the middle. However, if we have loaded our content, then sliver to box adapter works better because it will make as much space as is needed to fit all the content. By the way, if you try to use sliver fill remaining, but inside it you put a widget that doesn't fit in the available space, then you will get an overflow error, which looks like this. So the main thing to remember is that with sliver to box adapter, the child widget will size itself exactly to the space that it needs. And with sliver fill remaining, the child widget will fill all the available space in the viewport. So this is a good widget to use as the last sliver inside a scrollable area, or if we need to center some content in the middle of the screen, like in this case. So make sure that you use sliver fill remaining or sliver to box adapter depending on what is most appropriate. In summary, we have seen how to use all the most common sliver widgets so that we can add scrollable content to our Flutter apps. And as a reminder, we can use sliver list or sliver grid if we need to show a collection of items inside a scrollable area. And we can use sliver to box adapter or sliver fill remaining if we want to add just a single widget. And overall, the general strategy for working with slivers is to always use a custom scroll view to define a scrollable area and add any of these sliver widgets inside it. So feel free to check the GitHub project for this video, which includes sample code for all the sliver widgets that we have discussed. And if you like my Flutter tutorials, you can also sign up on my website for more updates. Thank you very much for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to my channel.